Welcome back. In this video, we are going to prove angles congruent based on parallel lines. So if you have your notes from the previous video on 5.3 when we used angles to prove lines parallel, well, as it turns out, most of the theorems in this section are the converse of those. So I would have those handy and follow along as you go. So theorem 37, again, we're not going to worry about theorem numbers, but this is the one from this book. It says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. So this is the converse of what we had before. We knew that if alternate interior angles were congruent, the lines were parallel. Well, now the converse is true. So parallel lines imply that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So in this case, we must be given that two lines are parallel, like line A is parallel to line B, and then we want to prove angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Well, here's our two parallel lines. And we're going to cut them with our transversal. So A and B are parallel. So we could mark our diagram that those two are parallel. And then the alternate interior angles are congruent. So parallel lines imply alternate interior angles congruent. Our next theorem, very similar, parallel lines imply the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So the short version, parallel lines imply alternate exterior angles congruent. So again, if we're given A is parallel to B, using our diagram from above, we can prove a pair of alternate exterior angles congruent. Opposite sides of the transversal in the exterior region. So we could say angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. The next theorem, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of corresponding angles are congruent. So again, the converse of what we saw in the previous section, parallel lines imply corresponding angles congruent. So again, we must have established lines are parallel. So if we have, line, again, line A is parallel to line B, and let's say we prove angle 5 congruent to angle 6, we better have something that looks like this. So we have line A parallel to line B. And then we know any pair of corresponding angles will be congruent. So 5 will be congruent to 6. Any pair of corresponding angles we could, would be congruent. In fact, 8 would be congruent to 9. Because those two are also corresponding angles. Theorem 41 says, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal is supplementary. So that might be like angles 8 and 10 have to be supplements. One could be x, one would be 180 minus x. So our reason and a proof, parallel lines imply interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. And that would be our reason in proof. And as it turns out, we have another theorem the same kind of thing. We can go back to our diagram here. 
we also have exterior angles on the same side of the transversal would also be supplementary. So that one would be x, and that one might be 180 minus x. So another reason in proof, parallel lines imply exterior angles on the same side. The transversal. And that's important, the same side of the transversal are supplementary. And that totally makes sense if you think about it, because isn't aren't angles 9 and 10 supplements, and 8 and 11 are supplements? So as it turns out, you know, if 9 is going to be x, then 11 is going to be 180 minus x. So it totally makes sense that those are going to be supplements, and there's only really one word difference between those two, so those should be fairly easy to memorize. The harder part is recognizing. Do you have alternate? Here, do we have exterior angles on the same side of the transversal, like 9, 11? Or do we have interior angles on the same side of the transversal, like 10 and 8? And something interesting here that you may have noticed, if we have parallel lines, okay, line A is parallel to line B and they're cut by a transversal, okay, well, if you look around, don't we know that, you know, the corresponding angles are congruent or, um, the alternate exterior angles are going to be congruent. And as you go around, you'll notice, well, if you have vertical angles and you have supplements, as it turns out, if we have parallel lines and they're cut by a transversal, any pair of angles will either be supplementary or congruent. Any pair of angles will either be supplementary or congruent. So very interesting. Like these two will be supplements. So there you go. Using vertical angles, we're either going to have one hash mark or none, and we know that the one and the none are supplements. So every pair will be supplementary and congruent. Next theorem. In a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other. So we might be given that line A is parallel to line B, and we get, are given that line A is perpendicular to C. So if I have C cut through here, make our two parallel lines, and if C comes through, and it is perpendicular to line A, as it comes through, it will also be perpendicular to line B. Next theorem says if two lines are parallel to a third line, then the two lines are parallel to each other. This is the transitive property of parallel lines. So parallel is transitive. Perpendicular, not transitive, but parallel is transitive. So if A is parallel to B and B is parallel to C, then A is parallel to C. Okay, so A is parallel to B. And B is parallel to C. So A and B are parallel. B and C are parallel. Therefore, A must be parallel to C by the transitive property of parallel lines.
And the final postulate is the parallel postulate. This one you will have to memorize, and you pretty much have to memorize the way it stands here. Your parents probably memorized it. Your grandparents probably memorized it. Okay, the parallel postulate. Given a line and through a point not on that line. So we're given a line. So if I'm given like line A and a point not on that line, call it point B. There is exactly one line parallel to the given line that's going to go through that point. Now, aren't there an infinite number of lines through point B? I can draw all sorts of lines through point B. But only one of those lines is going to be parallel to A. And we'll call it L. So only one of these lines that goes through point B will be parallel to A. So given a line and through a point not on that line, there's exactly one line parallel to the given line. You might hear me say that a little bit differently. You know, given a line and a point not on that line, there is exactly one line through that point parallel to the given line, that kind of thing. Um, but you get the idea. So given a line and a point not on the line, there's going to only be one line through that point that's going to be parallel to that given line. So let's do an application of the parallel postulate. Let's do a crook problem. So we're given that line A is parallel to line B, and we want to find the measure of angle 1. Well, the parallel postulate here can help us out. Let's say this point here is point X. Well, don't we know that if, if A and B are parallel based on the parallel postulate, there's going to be one line through X that's parallel to either A or B. Okay? So, right through the, the middle of our crook here, we can draw a line. So we're going to draw a line through X. Okay? And what allows us to do that is the parallel postulate. So we're going to draw a line through X that's parallel to, doesn't really matter, line A or B. I'm going to start from the bottom, I'll work from the bottom up, to line B. So if I draw a line through there, I can say that now that line C is parallel to line B. And using the transitive property of parallel lines, A is parallel to B is parallel to C. Now I know all three of these are parallel. And I'm pretty much on my way. Since all these lines are parallel, now I can use my property of parallel lines. And don't I know that parallel lines imply that the alternate interior angles are congruent? And that means that the bottom part of angle 1, not the bottom half, but the bottom part of angle 1 has to be 40 because these are alternate interior angles. The bottom part and that one are alternate interior angles. Okay? Well, I also know that the top part of angle 1, these two, have to be supplements because the interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. So parallel lines imply interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplements. That means the top part has to be 80. So 
angle 1 is made up of the bottom part, 40, plus the top part, 80. Back at our diagram, there we go. We have 80, 40 on the bottom, we have 80 on the top, using our properties of parallel lines. So angle 1 must be 120 degrees. And there is an example of a crook problem. We use our parallel postulate, we use our property of parallel lines, we use parallel lines imply alternate interior angles congruent, we use parallel lines, imply interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. So we will practice more of this when I see you in class.